Breaks the Internet is the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph, and it's also Disney's attempt at ripping off Sony's masterpiece, The Emoji Movie, but I won't dwell on that for so long, because my audience hates it whenever I talk about my love for The Emoji Movie, so let's just not talk about Sony for once, talk about Wreck-It Ralph. In this film, the wheel on the Sugar Rush arcade game completely breaks off due to some incidents, and Litwack, the owner of this arcade place, is about to unplug Sugar Rush and have it scrapped, so Vanellope and Ralph have to go onto the internet to find this wheel on eBay, and they find out that the internet is this vast, kind of exciting, kind of dangerous place. I adore the first Wreck-It Ralph film. Like, I really do love that film. Loved it ever since I first saw it in 2012 to now. Every time I see it, when it starts to get near the end, just something hits me and I start to cry a little bit. It's just one of those films that really reaches out to me all the time, and I adore it so much. So when I heard that they were going to make a sequel, I was excited for a, the longest time because I adore the characters so much, and I think the world just has so much potential for story. And then they started to talk more about how it's going to take place on the internet, and some of the trailers came out, and they put a lot of attention on the Oh My Disney, which is, you know, the makers of this film, Disney, they're going to their own website, and you have these other famous names popping up, and I started to get a little worried, like, oh no, is this going to be, like, product placement galore, and that's it? Like, I really don't want that out of a Wreck-It Ralph sequel, and I'm happy to report that no, the internet is not the most important thing in this film. It is so focused more so on Ralph and Vanellope's friendship. Thank you. God! I walked out really liking this film. First of all, the characters, Ralph and Vanellope, they're, they're just so much fun to watch. They start this film kind of where they ended off in the first one. Their chemistry is just so good. John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman, that is. They're just so good together vocally. So it's hard not to be already entertained by their chemistry right there. It also helps that they have a really great playground to be in, that being the internet. And even though I said the internet is very secondary to the actual story, they are able to do a lot of cool stuff with the internet, that is. They have a lot of clever jokes, they say a lot of things about the internet that is pretty important to hear. The character of Nosemore, played by Alan Tudyk, he was pretty fun. Spamly, played by Bill Hader, that was a fun addition. Yes, played by Taraji P. Henson, very fun. She runs this place called BuzzTube, which is very similar to YouTube, obviously, and that's another thing I liked about this movie, is that even though they have all these famous names, they really focus on stuff that's fictional, this kind of based on other things, but it's a fictional place, kind of like what they did with the first record, Ralph, where they had Fix-It Felix Jr. and Sugar Rush as the primary worlds that you were in, these made-up games, as opposed to all these famous ones that they kind of referenced in the background. And besides BuzzTube, they also go to this online game called Slaughter Race, where they get meet with the character Shank, played by Gal Gadot. She was also a lot of fun. They introduce a lot of really fun characters in this film. Like, none of them came off as annoying or unnecessary. They all really do fit in with the narrative. And speaking Speaking of that narrative, why I really walked out really enjoying this film is because this movie has a theme that is much more mature and goes in a much more mature direction than I ever would have expected this movie to actually go in, which I, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm not sure why I was surprised by that, because I thought the first record Ralph was so good and so amazingly touching, but the second one, I guess maybe it was the internet stuff that was throwing me, but it actually goes in a lot of interesting emotional places that I had a lot of people in my audience crying. I wasn't crying with them. Like, the first movie, I, I could still cry at that, but this one, I was close to it, though. I was very close to it, because this movie takes something that you would see in other kind of family films, and even some just films in general, um, but they kind of handle it in a Hollywood kind of uh, yay, happy ending, nothing's changing kind of thing. But in this film, they decided, nah, we're not going to go for that Hollywood kind of ending. We're going to show you something that happens a lot, and you're just gonna have to deal with it, like, that's life. And I was just sitting there, just like, wow, like, they actually went there with that, with, with these characters, and it, it just really added a lot to them, which is something I love, because those characters, they're just so interesting in that first film, and they took them here, and they didn't retread anything, they just expanded on them. And that's the best kind of sequel, is when you take these characters, and for the sequel, you don't just get rid of everything that happened in the first one, you just, you make more out of what you already set up, which is fantastic. And even though I personally wasn't really bawling in this film like I was at the end of the first movie, it still really touched me in a way that just, I felt so sentimental over it, where I was kind of just like, oh, they're actually doing that. Like, I felt a lot of heart with this. 
which is why I really love how they handled the internet aspect, is that the internet isn't really primary, it is secondary. It just serves as this playground for them to be in and to flesh out this story, which is much more important than that. The story itself is just so well delivered because of the internet landscape that they're in. And that was fantastic. My worries of them just focusing on product placement and Oh My Disney just completely thrown out the window because even though that product placement is in there, you recognize all these names and the Disney princess sequence is pretty fantastic and really funny and it's just a little meta too. There's, if you look closely at like their clothing at certain points, like it's really funny. And they also say a couple lines that are a little meta. All that stuff is fun and it's not handled in a way that's just kind of cynical, but they also decide hey, this is really fun, but we need to back down on that because Vanellope and Ralph, these are the two that we need to follow. This is their film. And just because they're in the internet doesn't mean that we're going to have the internet just completely take over. We have to stay focused on them. And that was great. Because you see a lot of movies that try to focus only on, hey, what's cool, what's generic, what's going to make us a lot of money. And then you see this movie where it has the setting up of, hey, this is going to be a cash grab and kind of unnecessary. But then it goes in the direction of, oh, we I feel like we actually really needed this addition. Like, we really needed to see... The, these characters grow. I wouldn't say this movie's flawless. I think the beginning is a little rushed. I think they could have spent a little bit more time with it. There's also a really out of place exposition line that's thrown in with like a flashback image. And I was like, okay, that's really like lazy writing there. Like that doesn't fit. Like that doesn't, that doesn't sound like something a real person would say. I'd also say there's a couple jokes in there that just didn't really land for me and no one else in the audience was laughing either. So it was just kind of this awkward like, oh, we're just kind of watching them attempt comedy and it's not really landing kind of thing. And also, a lot of people might complain that a lot of the video game characters that you saw in the first film don't have a major role and they just kind of show up for a little bit. I was fine with that. Like, really, this movie is Ralph and Vanellope, so I was fine with those characters being much more, much more background. But Fix-It Felix and Calhoun, they have this scene in the first act that the way it's structured and the way it's kind of placed in with everything else, it feels like it's going to branch off into its own subplot that may, might just work back into the main one at some point, but it's really just there just to give Ralph some inspiration for something, and then to also make a joke about, like, near the end of the film, and that joke was funny, and I liked that, uh, that, that one scene gave inspiration to Ralph to actually go onto the internet, but... I think it could have just been edited a little better instead of making it feel like it's gonna uh, be this whole story. Just maybe rework it so it just feels a little bit more like, okay, this isn't really gonna lead to anything, it's just the small joke. Other than that, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. It's very funny. It has a lot of clever ideas just with how they use the internet, but also with how they treat these characters and how mature it gets. Like I said, this movie is not going with a typical Hollywood ending. They really do go for something that will reach a lot of kids and a lot of adults too, and they'll be like, you know what? That's a great moral. And it's something that I do think a lot of children need to learn. And, and for me, I was watching it and I was like, this is another thing that I can really relate to. And I'm glad that they did that because it just, it, it taught me something that needed reassuring, basically, for me. Uh, that's all I can really say without spoiling it. You have to really go in uh, knowing as little about that theme as possible, I think. Just know they do a lot of really funny, clever, deep things with these characters, and the characters are all great, the new ones that they introduce, and also the old ones that you love and don't want tarnished. The internet product placement, it's not that distracting, and it doesn't really entirely feel like product placement as you're watching the film. It just feels like they needed it in this story. The animation is vibrant and lively, and it's fantastic, but you already knew that, of course. In this review, I just really wanted to focus on how much I love that theme that they did, and even though this isn't a flawless film, I can definitely see myself re-watching this later on and, and getting a lot out of it still. I'm going to give Ralph Breaks the Internet a B plus. It has its issues here and there. It's not a perfect sequel. I still prefer the first one, but my God, did it really surprise me in a way that I, I really wasn't expecting. And I really, really hope Rich Moore, the director, uh, does more things because he also directed the first one and was involved with Zootopia as, as the director. So I really hope he has a bright future ahead of him with more animation projects because he really does have a talented voice out there that, that I think needs to be expressed more. But if you've seen Ralph Breaks the Internet, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.